Welcome to another crochet pattern. I'm Lizette from Cassette Designs and this is some bunny to love. You can also make it with regular yarn. Um, this one's pretty holy because I didn't realize how thin it was. It's one of those that say it's four, size four, but definitely skinnier than usual. You can put a note in its little heart pocket. Um, also would be cool as like a tooth fairy pillow or tooth fairy, tooth fairy doll. You're gonna need a 3.25 crochet hook, size four yarn. I have the colors listed as pink, red, black, and white, but I'm gonna use this instead of pink. Some polyfill, a stitch marker, 10 millimeter safety eyes. You could also even use buttons for the eyes. That would be cute um, and just sew them on where the eyes would go. A yarn needle, I use a bent one. It makes it easier when you're connecting pieces to get um, the needle in and then curved back out. Some sewing pins, so when you're putting the pieces together, you can hold them in place. And then I always add pliers onto my supplies list because there's times where um, like when a doll is closed and you're trying to sew and you're like pulling the needle through, you can kind of use this like if this were really hard to pull by hand you can use them to rip the needle through so it just saves your a lot of strain on your hands here is a list of stitches you will need to know if there is anything on this list that you don't know how to do i would google it um, search it on youtube and i do have a video myself for the magic ring which would be in the description below also a video for the decreases and there's a video for the popcorn stitch it is done slightly different in this pattern and we'll go over that when we get to that part it's really just for the bunny's feet um, but every pattern will use a different stitch to make a popcorn stitch the finished doll ends up about three and a quarter inches wide so i did that um, based on the widest part which is the head and then four and a half inches tall and I have noted in my pattern that that depends again on your yarn and your tension. I am the same person that made these two and you can see the left one is taller and wider than the right one. Same hook, two different types of yarn um, and my tension is about the same for both but you can see one turned out bigger and even so this one what I should have done and I, I kind of purposely kept going to leave it as an example because it, it actually bothers me how how gappy that is but you see the holes and you can see the white polyfill inside, you don't want that. So what I, sh what I would normally have done, um, instead of continuing to make this, I would have gone down um, from my 3.25 and chosen a smaller hook because this yarn was definitely too thin for this hook and my tension. Now, if, if I was someone that pulled tighter than I do, then I maybe could have made this work. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Okay, so good, bad. Starting with the head, we're gonna make a magic ring and that's how most um, doll patterns will start. If you need to see this in slow motion with more you know, detail, click the link in my description for a magic ring. We're gonna do six single crochets into the magic ring. And then pull that tight to close it up and that is round one for round two we're going to increase in all six stitches so six times increasing whenever i do my first stitch after the magic ring i grab the tail also and to me that just helps secure it so my first stitch i have the working yarn and the tail so there's my first single crochet and it's an increase so i'm going right back in and then i throw my stitch marker on so i don't lose my place into the first one and you'll do that every single row then as you go crochet over the tail so that you don't have to worry about weaving it in
Okay, and you should have 12 stitches and always count to make sure you do before you move on. Okay, round three, you're gonna do one single crochet in the next stitch and then increase in the next one and repeat that all the way around. So there's one. Put my stitch marker and increase. Round four, you're gonna do two and then an increase. So two in their own stitch, so one, next stitch, two, third stitch, increase, and repeat that all the way around. For round five, we're gonna do three single crochets in their own separate stitch. So one, two, three, and then an increase. And then repeat that all the way around, three and an increase. Round six will be four single crochets and an increase. Round seven, you're gonna do five single crochets and then an increase. For rounds eight through 17, it's real easy. You're just gonna put one stitch, one single crochet into each stitch all around. So come back after you get uh, up, to set, um, up to round 17. Okay, after completing row 17, if you're going to do the safety eye option, which again looks like that, this is where you're going to want to insert the safety eyes between rows 13 and 14. So you're going to count to row 13 and put the eye between. So row 13 above, row 14 below, and push the eye all the way in, then take the backing and hold it this way. So you can, here, let me, I'll flip this inside out and that goes that way. Push that all the way down. Okay, make sure it's all the way down like that. Okay, then you're gonna count nine stitches across to put the other eye in. So that means there's gonna be eight empty stitches between the eyes, so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Insert the eye there. And get the backing on. For round 18 is when we start decreasing. So we're gonna do five single crochets and then one decrease. So let's get our stitch marker in there and do five single crochet and then an invisible decrease if you have never done that and you want a slower video on that check the description below for a link but you're only going to go through the front loop of the next two stitches like that pull through those two and then pull through all the way and there's your decrease. So continue with round five, doing five single crochet and a decrease. Okay, for round 19, you're gonna do four single crochets and then a decrease and repeat that all the way around. Okay, you can see the head starting to curve in. For round 20, we're gonna do three single crochet and a decrease and repeat that all the way around. Round 21, you're gonna decrease 12 times. Okay, 
Okay, at this point, you do not want to cut your yarn. And we continue with the body. We're just going to keep on going where we left off. So there's no need to cut it, okay? And before we keep going, because the, the opening is getting pretty small, we're going to fill the head with polyfill. Okay, now continuing with the body, we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch. So round 22 is 12 single crochets. For round 23, we're going to increase tw um, 12 times. So we're going to end up with 24 stitches. Okay, here it is after round 23, and you have 24 stitches at the neck. Uh, round 24, 25, and 26, so the next three rounds, you're just going to put one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So that's 24 stitches for the next three rows. Okay, for round 27, you're going to do three single crochets and then an increase and repeat that all the way around, three and an increase. Alright, I haven't said this before, but I uh, just want to mention every round you should definitely be counting your stitches to make sure it's matching the number um, for that round because then you'll have to take it out and redo parts. Okay, for round 28, you're gonna do four single crochets and one increase and repeat that all the way around. Okay, you should have 36 stitches after completing row 28. And for the next four rounds, rows, uh, rounds 29 through 32, you're gonna do one single crochet into each stitch around. So four rows and then come back. Okay, round 32 is finished. And now on to round 33. For round 33, we're gonna do two single crochets and then one decrease. And repeat that all the way around. Okay, you should have 27 stitches at the end of round 33 then round 34 you're gonna do one single crochet and then one decrease all the way around the end of round 34 and you should have 18 stitches and we're gonna fill the body with polyfill and before we finish For round 35, we're going to do the same as round 34 by doing one single crochet and then one decrease and repeat that all the way around. Okay, that's the end of round 35 and you should have 12 stitches. If you need to keep adding polyfill um, until we close this up, just do so. Um, if you feel like it needs it. Okay, and then the last round of the body, round 36, we're just gonna do six decreases. Okay, you're left with this tiny little hole, so go ahead and add more polyfill if you need to. 
when you need to be able to get more polyfill in there and it's really closed up like that this uh stuffing stick it's called comes with the bag of polyfill so i'll i use that and do little tiny clumps like this and then just use that to push that in there see it's very important that this bunny has a nice plump belly because that guarantees more cuteness. Okay, this is the end of row 36 and you will have six stitches and a tiny little hole left. So what you're gonna do is, you're not gonna do a regular fasten off where you kind of do like a slip stitch and pull this through, cause then it leaves a little bump there and you'll see that um, on the bottom. So what I do is, this is just after finishing that last decrease and just pull it through. I already cut it. Um, ignore that it kind of got unraveled for some reason but you're gonna just pull that through and give yourself a decent tail and then we're gonna close up the hole so get your yarn needle okay and then to close up the hole what we're gonna do is go through just the front loop of all six stitches so here's the first one front loop only okay don't go through both Pull that through the next stitch just the front loop the third one fourth one fifth And the sixth one. All right, and then you're just gonna pull that tight and see how it closes up the opening. Then you're gonna take your needle, go right back through the center and just come up somewhere far away on the body. So let's say there, pull that through. And as you can see, when you pull it tight, then it flattens that out and it's a nice clean finish. And then just to make sure this is secure, go right back in where you were because we don't want to see a different color out here. If your yarn is all the same color, it's not so much of a worry, but we're just going to go right back in, come up somewhere farther away and do that about two or three times. So that's two. Let's do it again. Go right back in. Come up in a different direction. Okay, and that should be enough to secure it. So we're gonna just cut the tail. And then the body is done. Okay, next we're going to do the face details. We're going to start with the mouth. So get your yarn needle, a nice long piece of black yarn, then thread the needle. We're going to start the mouth between rounds 15 and 16 of the face. So starting from the top, we're going to count to um, where in between rows 15 and 16. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, here's 15 and 16, so right here. Okay, so I put a little pin in place. You want to make sure it's centered with the eyes, and that's why we put the eyes on first. Okay, so you're going to take your black yarn and just pick um, a spot, you know, kind of away from where you're going, we'll say here. Okay, so just that's where you're going to enter. 
and just come up where that pin is. And then I'm gonna remove that. Pull through and leave a tail. You're gonna need that later to uh, tie a knot and weave it in and I'll show you that whole process. So here we are at the beginning of making the mouth. We're gonna make a line one stitch down. So here's where we started and just go one stitch down. Now it's good to know where your next spot's gonna be so you don't you can just come up where the next point is. And we are gonna make the mouth like a letter Y. So if I'm doing this one stitch down from there, a Y is gonna be going this way, and we're gonna come up one stitch diagonal from this. So I'm gonna come up one stitch up and over. So right here, okay? So again, started there, we went in one stitch down. So that'll make a line like that. And then we're gonna come up diagonal from where we started. All right, so we made our first line. And then to continue with making a Y shape, we're gonna go back in where we started and up diagonal one, like that. Okay, you can see that the Y shape is forming and the last step going right back in where we started. Okay, so back in at the beginning and then you're going to want to come out all the way where the tail that we left is right there same spot okay and now bunny has a mouth and a nose then i cut the extra just to make the two tail ends about the same length. Then you're gonna tie uh, at least two knots. So just a regular knot, nothing special. There's one, and then one more time. Okay, so you got two knots. You can do three if you want. And then we're gonna get both of these tails into the needle. Okay, you see I've got both tail ends weaved in. Then we're gonna go back into the same hole that the knot was made into. This yarn is a different color than this. You do not want to go into another hole because then you're going to see a line. So go right back in where you were and just come up somewhere far away. So I'm going to come up at the top of the head somewhere and pull that through until you see the knot go into the head. Okay, so see how it's just completely gone. All right, but we still have this tail end, so it's long enough we can weave it in one more time. So again, go into the same spot so we don't see this black yarn on the outside and just come up somewhere far away. Pull that through until it's gone. And then you just have this little tail and you can cut that and then just sort of like squish it and it'll help kind of pull that in so now it's gone next we're going to add the whites of the eyes it's not as easy to see because i chose a really light pink for this but it'll really pop on the color we're using now just like with the mouth, we're going to cut a nice long piece of white yarn and then weave it into the needle. Just like the mouth, we're going to start somewhere out of the way over here 
and you're gonna wanna go look at the eye and sort of dead center of the eye and the stitch that's right at the bottom. So we're gonna come up right there. See that? And let's say um, you're having a hard time pulling the needle through, grab your pliers and just grab the needle and pull it through. Leave a bit of a tail. Actually, I wanna go one more stitch down. Um, remember every, uh, depending on where we put the eyes on here, we have increases and decreases. So there, some of these stitches are technically a little bigger or smaller than others. Feel free to make like a slight adjustment like that. To me, I think I want it a little more underneath the eye because of where this, the whole of that stitch is landing. So I'm gonna actually restart that and come out one more over right there. Yeah, that's, that's gonna look more like, my, the whole point is to have it look like he's looking up. <laughs> All right, and then you're gonna go in the stitch that is right at the halfway point this way. So into here. We're gonna hop to the other eye. There's no need to cut this and start over for this eye. We're just gonna continue. So we're gonna come up at the bottom of this eye. Right there. I'm gonna use the pliers to pull that through. And don't pull it too tight. You wanna see kind of the puffiness of the yarn. So there's the one I done, cute. And I think I'm okay with where that one landed. So same thing, we're gonna go back in at the halfway point of the eye this way. So I'm gonna go in right there. And then, since my goal is to come up over here, if you have um, those really long needles which i really should have one too you can easily reach across but i've got kind of a short needle here so i'm going to kind of just pick a halfway point just to get myself across i'm going to use this make sure that i like how that eye turned out adorable okay so we don't want this random white yarn here so we're gonna go again this is if you have a short needle you're gonna go back in and then get yourself to where you need to come out which is the same spot as where you started and that'll disappear and now you have just like with the mouth we're gonna tie a knot cut all this extra I like to do two knots. Check that I didn't pull too tight. Sometimes when you pull too tight, the yarn will slip under the eye. And that's why when you put the backing on the eye, it's important to do it all the way down so that it, it keeps it real nice and tight against the face. All right, so we have our tails. We're gonna weave those in like before. And if you squeeze it and it doesn't all go in, just use your like the back end of the needle and just poke that inside. All right. And then the face is done if you chose to do the safety eye option. If you chose to do the closed eye option, I'll show you that next. I'm just gonna put it on the back of his head. <laughs> 
cut yourself a very long piece of black yarn, thread it in the needle. Now at this point you'd already have the mouth done so I'm going to really quick add another mouth here just to show you where the eyes are in relation to that part. Okay so we have a mouth now and we're going to start these eyes. You're going to start one row up from the nose and then here's where the edge of the nose is so we'll say this stitch here. We're going to go two stitches to the side so one, two. And this is where the eye will start on either side. So here again on this side, the nose ends here. So we're going to start one, two over here. Okay, so first the left eye. So I'm going to come up here. And um, you're seeing this tail end here because I didn't sew it and um, tie a knot. Because I'm going to take this out since it's the back of his head. <laughs> okay, so that is the goal. You can use a pin to mark your spot. Okay, so I have my beginning spot marked. And right now my um, my yarn is coming out here so I'm gonna go back in and pretending that this is where you started for the eyes I'm gonna come up in that hole okay, so I can remove that okay the first spot you're gonna go back in is diagonal and up one so here's where we are up one and then to the left since we're doing the left eye so it may it's going to make a diagonal line like that so that's where we go in the next spot that we're going to come up is one to the left so again diagonal from where we started so we're going in and then go one more to the left and that's where we come back up you see that diagonal one so now we need to come back down here to draw this line so back in there and then we're where we're going to want to come up is from this last point diagonal down okay so let's complete this line by going in and then diagonal down from the last one I know it looks a little confusing, but it makes sense once you pull the yarn through and see the lines that it's making. So there's that line. So we went here, then here, and now we're going here. So we're going to complete this line by going back in here. And then we're going to want to make an eyelash mark. So a little line, just one space down so from there one to the left of this one right there and then to complete this line go back here and then our last line we want to make is going to be this way like this so back in and then up diagonal and out. Okay, and the last part to complete the eye is back in there. And we're gonna hop over to where the, the right eye is gonna start. So remember with the beginning, we went up one from the nose and then two over so i'm going to come up here i'm going to mark it with a pin up one over two so that's where i'm going to come up as i complete this eye take out the pin and then pull through and see the left eye get finished like that So everything is going to be done the same, but we're going to do, you know, all the angles going out this way now. So the first line, diagonal up, so up one, over one. We're going to come up one stitch to the right of that. 
complete this line by coming back in here. Come up, diagonal down from that last part. Complete this line by coming in here. Come back up one stitch to the right of that last part. And go back in to complete that line. And then the last part of the eyelash is going to be diagonal up from that last point which is also one stitch up from this that point there. And then complete the eye by coming in here. And again, get all the way back across to where your um, yarn started. And there's the end of that eye. Okay, and then at that point, just like on this side, when we did that, you're going to tie a knot and weave that in. And if you're going to be giving this to a baby, that is what you want to do. Because safety eyes have the possibility of coming out and choking. I believe they usually say uh, three years and, and under, they don't recommend for these. Comment below uh, which eye you choose. Or you can do what I did. <laughs> I have a two-face. It kind of makes the thing of that Nightmare Before Christmas guy. Okay, next we will be making the ears. This will be done in rows, not continuous rounds, which means we're not going to keep going in a circle over and over. We're going to chain at the beginning of each row. So make a slip knot. You're going to chain three. Start in the second chain from the hook and make two single crochets. So there's the first chain, second chain, and row one is done. For row two, you're going to chain one, and you're going to turn your work. And you're going to increase in both of those single crochet you just made. So there's the first one. See the V on the top. And that's two single crochets into that same stitch for an increase. And then repeat that in the second single crochet. So row two has four stitches, one, two, three, and four. For rows three through 25, you're going to repeat the same thing. You're going to chain one, turn your work, and just do one single crochet into each stitch. So that's four single crochets in rows three through 25. And that's 23 rows all together. So keep repeating this four, uh, four stitch row until you have 25 all together. Okay, this is what it looks like after row 25. And you can see when you hold it against the head, it should end up close to the bottom of the body. For row 26, we're going to go around the edge of the ear to make it a little bit cleaner looking on the outside and to hide this tail end and you won't need a needle to do that so you're going to start with a chain one and then we're going to single crochet going through the sides of each row so if you look there's like this long skinny bar like that so you can do one single crochet into that. And then for the second one, I go right into this hole right here next to it. Okay, so you went under this and then right in there. 
So repeat that again. Look for the long, skinny bar on the side. It almost looks like a, a regular stitch when you turn it this way. And I'm just going through one loop. And then right into the hole next to that. And just keep repeating that all the way down and that makes you go through a stitch next to each row. So if your number is, you know, one or two different than mine, it's not going to make a big difference. The main thing is you don't want to be, you know, skipping big chunks like and making it pull the ear. So just following that, going through the long skinny piece like that, and then the hole right next to it will make you have an even edge all the way around. And when you get to here where you are right up to where the tail from the very beginning is, you're going to start crocheting over that. So continue to do what you were doing, but just go over that tail like this. So the tail is between the working yarn and the loop I pulled up. And then I complete the stitch over it, so it's inside that. So again, go under it, pull up a loop, the tail end is here. And complete the stitch over top. Okay, you can see I kept going until I got to the very end of that tail end. And I'm going to continue to just crochet over that until it's completely gone. So one more stitch and it should be hidden away. See? And then the tail end is gone without you having to get your needle and sew it in. And then just continue until you get to this top corner of the ear. So we started here, we went all the way down, around and up to here, and then we stopped. Okay, you can see we got to the end. And then we're gonna fasten off with a tail that's long enough for us to be able to sew this onto the bunny. So fasten off just means you do like if you're doing a slip stitch. So pull one loop through and pull it all the way, however long you need it to be. And then just cut that and the first ear is done. And there is a right and wrong side. So the side you were facing while you were crocheting is the correct outer side okay so that's what should be showing this side looks a little different when you look on the edge you don't see those V's of that crochet look now go ahead and make a second one exactly the same okay now you have two ears finished each with a long tail on the end and you can just put them aside for now Next, we'll be making the feet and we'll be going back to working in the round with continuous rows. Okay, row one of the foot, you're going to make a magic ring with six single crochets into it. Tighten the ring. For row two, you're going to increase in each stitch, so you're going to do two single crochets into all six, which would leave you with 12 at the end. And don't forget your stitch marker. Round three is gonna be one single crochet in the next stitch 
and an increase in the one after that and repeat that all the way around. For row four, uh, that's where we're gonna be making the toes. So the first stitch is going to be a popcorn stitch. There's different ways you can do it. And for this pattern, what we're gonna do is make three single crochets into that very first stitch. So here's the first one. Put three single crochets all together into that same spot. Okay, all three are in there. Remove your hook. Insert your hook into the first single crochet. So here's one, two, three. So put the hook in the first one. Grab the loop that you dropped and you're gonna pull that all the way through. Like that. So what you did is you made a little bump. Next, just do one single crochet in the stitch next to that. So that's this one here. And make sure that this, you know, stays up and doesn't get pushed down like that. So keep the popcorn stitch popped out. And then your single is next to that. We're going to do another popcorn stitch in the next one. So again, put three single crochets into this same stitch. Drop your loop. Go back into the first one of the three. So here's three, two, one. Go into that one. Grab the loop that you dropped and then pull that all the way through. So now we have two little toes, single crochet in the one after that. So, so far for row four, we did one popcorn, single crochet, one pop, another popcorn stitch, single crochet. And now we're gonna make the third toe in the next stitch and it's the same exact thing again. So three single crochets. Drop the loop. Go back into the first of the three. Grab the loop that you dropped. And pull that all the way through. And single crochet in the one next to that. Do a single crochet in the next two stitches. So that's one, and then another in the next one. Then we're gonna do three double crochets, each one in its own stitch. So the next three stitches get one double crochet. Then we're going to do an increase in the next stitch with two double crochets in the same stitch. Then again, one double crochet in the next three stitches. And then one single crochet in the last three stitches. Okay, you should have 19 stitches all together. And you can see the three little toes for the bunny. For round five, we're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch. So that includes the popcorn stitches. So if you look here, the very kind of next available space 
you can get your stitch in there. That's for that first popcorn stitch. Let's mark the beginning of the row. And then into the single crochet that we put in between. So that's this V on top. And again into the next popcorn stitch, which is this little space right here. The V on top, which is the single crochet in between. And the last popcorn stitch right here. And there should be 14 left. Okay, it's getting a little easier now to see those popcorn stitch you made for the toes. And three right there. For row six, you're gonna do one single crochet and one decrease after that, and repeat that six times. Okay, and you should have one more stitch left. So just do one single crochet in that last stitch. And you should have 13 stitches left um, in round six. And that is the end of the foot. So go ahead and make a second one exactly like that. And then fasten off with a tail long enough to sew this onto the body later. So give yourself a long enough tail that you can attach the foot like this. But for now, just put them both aside once you make two. Okay, next up we have the arms, which is probably the easiest part of the whole pattern. And like most uh, pieces, we're going to start with a magic ring and six single crochets into the ring. For round two, you're going to do two separate single crochets and then one increase and you're going to repeat that two times all right you should have eight all together and make sure if it starts to curl on you that way that you have it curled this way all right, for the next five rounds, um, round three through seven, you're just going to put one single crochet into each stitch. So just repeat one around into each stitch for five more stitches up to row seven. Okay, there's the end of the arm, and now you're going to fasten off and leave a tail that is long enough to sew this onto the body later. You do not need to fill this with polyfill, but you can. Um, it's just, it really holds its shape without you doing that. And make a, go ahead and make a second one, and then just set them aside. Next is the tail, and that's another very easy part of the pattern. You're going to start off just the same with the magic ring and six single crochet. Next, you're going to increase in each stitch around, so that is six increases, which will bring you to 12 stitches. For round three, you're going to do one single crochet in the next stitch, increase in the next stitch, and repeat that six times to bring you to 18 stitches for round three. Round four is 18 single crochets, so that's just one stitch in each all the way around.
For round five, you're going to do one single crochet in the next stitch and a decrease in the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that six times with a total of 12 stitches all the way around. Before you do round six, um, before the opening gets too small, you're going to want to put just a little bit of polyfill in there. And then when we get to the very end, if we need to add more, we can add with um, using the stuffing stick that comes with the polyfill. Okay, for the last round, you're going to do six decreases. Okay, then fasten off with a long tail so you can sew it onto the body. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more just to make it more full. And I'll be using the stuffing stick. Okay, I think that's full enough, nice and round. All right, now we're on the last part, which is the heart. And I last minute changed my mind to do pink instead of red. I don't know. I just think it'll pop more on the yarn I use for the bunny. You're going to start with the magic ring. Then you're going to chain three. You can close up the magic, magic ring a little bit. And then the next um, bunch of stitches we're going to work inside of the ring. So first we're going to do three triple crochets. So that's when you wrap your yarn around the hook twice. And just like a double crochet, you're going to pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And the only difference from this and a double crochet is you do it a third time. Okay, so that's one, here's your chain three, one triple crochet, and do two more. Then do three double crochets still inside of the loop. I sort of tighten up the loop as I go. Next, you're going to chain one, then do another triple crochet inside the loop. Chain one again, do three double crochets inside the loop. triple crochets inside the loop you're gonna chain two and then slip stitch into the magic ring so now you have your heart shape and you're going to want to pull that ring closed real tight. So here's that tail from the beginning. And we're going to pull that as tight as we can. And you see that closed up. Okay, for round two, you're going to slip stitch into the first and second chain of that chain three you did at the beginning. So if you look here, this is our chain three. Okay, and we're going to slip stitch in the first and second. Okay, so this V right here, that is from the first triple crochet we did. So this is, this is the triple crochet, the, the V at the top. This is the third chain, second, and first. It's sort of buried in there. So it's easier to count backwards sometimes when you can't um, see exactly where you need to put your hook. So again, this is the top of the triple, third chain, second chain, 
line and then that loop right there is where we want to do our first slip stitch. Alright, so we slip stitched into the first and second chain. Okay, then we're going to, in the next three stitches, so starting with that V at the top from the first stitch, which was a triple, we're going to do three increases, meaning we're going to increase in the next three stitches. So starting here, and this is a regular single crochet increase. So we're going to do two single crochets into the next three. So there's one, next stitch, and the third one. Okay, looks like that so far. Then we're going to single crochet into the next four stitches. So just one single crochet in the next four. So there's one. And that fourth one will actually be in the chain one. So this next stitch here is the chain one. We're going to use that as our fourth stitch. Then we're going to put three single crochets into this next stitch, which is the bottom point of the heart. So three single crochet all together in that stitch and again single crochet in the next four stitches using that chain one as one of them so the first one here is going to be in that chain one And then in the next three stitches, we're going to increase. So two single crochets into the next three. And now we're up to that chain two we did at the end of the first round. And we're going to slip stitch into each of those chains. And then to finish it off, we're going to slip stitch again into the center of the heart. And then you can fasten it off and weave in the end. You can grab the end and pull it through the back. And then now the front has a clean look. And you can just weave these ends into the back of the heart because nobody will see that once it's attached. Okay, the last step is putting all of these pieces we made together and assembling it all. This is where you're going to use pins if you have, and we can pin everything in place and see if it's all lined up right before we sew it on. The first thing I like to pin in place are the feet. And your goal is to be able to set the bunny down and it doesn't, you know, lean too far back or too far forward. So you see where you place it on the belly will determine how far forward or back it's going to lean. And for the back is where the tail will be what holds it um, in place from falling over. So actually let's pin the tail first, pin the tail on the bunny. The bottom of the tail, so Here's the opening of the tail. Here's what you'll see when it's on the bunny. So when I say the bottom, I'm referring to 
the row that the bottom of the tail will line up with. So we want to find row uh, round 32 of the body. So facing the back of the doll, um, we're going to, we can count backwards from the last row of the body, which would be here, up until we find where row 32 is. Okay, so the body has 36 rounds. So this is round 36, 35, 34, 33, and this is round 32. So I'm gonna put a pin right above round 32. And I'm also gonna look at the front and make sure that I am pinning it dead center with the body. So you can see the nose is here. So this pin needs to move over. So the nose is the center and the pin is right about center with the front of the, of the doll. Okay, so here's the back. I'm gonna move it one more to the left. There we go, I think that's more centered. So that is what I want the bottom of the tail to be lined up with. I'm gonna get another pin. I'm actually gonna go, gonna go right through the middle. I have that pinned, centered with the body. I'm gonna add some more so it doesn't move around while we are sewing. All right, and that feels pretty secure. I'm gonna kind of do a little test. And this is all, you know, a matter of preference too. So if you feel like it's leaning too far back, then go ahead and adjust your pins. And even after you get the feet pinned on, you can always, you know, keep adjusting it until you like the way it's positioned and how it holds itself up. And I do think mine is a little too far leaning back. Okay, so I'm gonna actually bring everything kind of down a peg, a pin. You can see I moved it a little too far this way, so I'm gonna go left. So it's a when it comes to assembling pieces on a doll, this is this is what it takes. You know, a lot of just slight adjustments can make all the difference. Take your time until you have it centered. You know, don't rush this because once you sew it on, and then you see how you know if it's crooked, it's gonna bother you forever. You know, you'd have to take it out to get it perfect to get it centered. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, now I have the tail um, at the right height that I want for the rabbit to sit. And I have it centered with the face. Okay, so now it's gonna lean back how I want it. You don't want it too forward, cause then it'll fall, you, but keep in mind the feet. So don't sew anything on until you have the tail and the feet where you want it. So next we're gonna grab the feet. And we want here, remember the feet have three toes, okay? So there's the opening. Feel free to put polyfill if you like. Three toes. We want the heel of the foot to line up around round 32. Okay, so again, this is round 36 at the beginning, at the end, sorry. 36, 35, 34, 33, and here is round 32. So I'm gonna put a pin right here. <laughs> Sorry, bunny. <laughs> and that is, so if you look on the side, there's a tail. My hand would be the ground. And that pin is where I want the heel of the foot to line up around. So let's pin each foot. Okay, I stuck one pin right through the center of the foot. And here's the other foot. We're going to do the same. I'm not going to bother putting multiple pins until we have the feet where we want them. 
So I'm going to line it up with this foot, pin in the center, side view, other side, and now I'm going to lay, sit him on the ground and see if he stands where I have it. So I can see he's leaning a little bit too much to the sides, so the feet need to come down a little bit. So I'm just going to move the, the pin like one row down. And I'm also going to spread them a little further apart so there could be some more balance that way too. And these are the kind of adjustments I'm just going to keep on making until when I set the bunny down, he doesn't fall over and he's not leaning too much um, one way than another. Also keep in mind you need space for the heart, so like the point of the heart will be kind of fitting right there between the legs and the little toes are kind of maybe right in front of it so I'm gonna go down even more so there's a little more space here and I can bring the heart down a little bit okay right now he's sitting very balanced okay side view I'm gonna go ahead and add more pins to hold the feet in this spot and then we're going to sew them on. Okay, got his little feetsies all pinned in. So they won't uh, twist around on me while I'm sewing them on. We can take this one out. And remember, most of the weight is in the head. So you don't want him too far forward. Or when you set him on a table, he's just going to fall. Okay, so as you can see, he's very stable. Okay, so now let's sew him on. And I have a link in the description for the seamless join technique is just a nice uh, way of sewing it on where when you look at the the part where the two separate pieces come together you don't see those v's it kind of makes them disappear okay so i'm not going to go over that in detail um for this video you can watch um the link below to learn how to do that and i'm just gonna fast forward through this part all right, this is made a lot easier with a bent needle like this because the angles that you're going that you're going to be trying to get the needle into are going to be a lot harder if it was just a straight needle. So for example, I'm going to start with the very next stitch on the foot. So I got my needle in there and I need to go into the body and then be able to bring that up through there. So just that, that bent shape makes it easier to get in and up with the needle. Okay, so I'm just gonna go continue to go through each stitch of the foot and down into the body until the both feet are connected. Then you're gonna do the same exact thing with the tail Having it pinned in place already, we're going to go through each stitch of the tail and into the body all the way around until it's attached. And there are the two feet attached on. And then again, I did not put polyfill inside and it stands perfectly fine without it, but you can go ahead and fill them if that makes you, um, if you prefer to fill them. Okay, so now we have the tail attached and the feet. Next, we're going to pin and sew the ears on and there is a right and wrong side so make sure you are looking at the side where the end of the last row is on the right so if it's this way that's the wrong side if the tail is over here then that's the right side so on the bunny the right side should be facing out and the goal of this design was that the ears would be kind of like slightly touching the ground so set your bunny down and then put the ear on the side of the head so that the ear is barely, you know, touching the ground. We don't want it, you know, like this. Obviously that would <laughs> that wouldn't make sense, but that's about where the length should be. And I have in the pattern um, that it's between rows six and seven, but that again, that will vary because of your yarn tension. Um, everyone crochets you know, a little tighter or looser than others. So it might not be exactly between 
row six and seven, but on the head. This is row one where it starts at the top. So one, two, three, four, five, here's six and seven. So it's gonna be between those two is where mine ended up lining up when I wrote the pattern. So you can see the ears curl a little bit so that worked and had them where they should be. As far as how far forward, the arms are going to be attached um, two rows down from the neck. So here's the neck, one, two. So the arm's gonna be here and you don't wanna completely cover the arm either. So just don't put the ears you know, too far forward. I think right there is good. So go ahead and pin both ears on. I have them the same distance from the middle and then give a little look as to if you like the placement and position the arms where they're gonna be and that's gonna work, okay? So go ahead and thread your tail end and you're just gonna sew along the edge of the ear to attach it to the head. And you see how the ears are kind of, um, they kind of curve up a little and down. If you wanted them more uh, flat toward the head, instead of having that kind of volume to it, when you sew the ears on, only go through the front loop and not both loops of the stitches here. You're gonna go into the head and then come out one stitch down. And then at the end, before pulling that tight, you're gonna tie a knot. And now your ear is attached. We're gonna weave in this end and then do the same and attach the other ear. All right, so when we sew the arms on, you're going to flatten the opening of the arm. And that's how it's gonna get sewed on. I already have one attached. Okay, so we're gonna flatten it like that. And again, starting two rows down from the neck. So there's row one, row two. So this should line up where you can see two rows and then the arm. And this can be adjusted obviously, because again, everyone's uh, tension and yarn will make things you know, slightly um, different positions, but that's about where you want to go. So we're going to pin that in place. And then I'm going to take the heart and make sure I like the position. And remember that, you know, they're, they're only attached right here. So these do have, you know, a little wiggle room that way. And the heart is going to sit there and the hands will be just one little stitch to attach here and here, and then one stitch to attach the heart to the body down here. So I like where that's at, it looks good to me. So I'm going to now thread my tail and sew this on. And you can see that just going through that edge there, the hand um, will most likely stick out a little bit and that's a really easy fix. So I'm gonna hold it down. And what I'm gonna do is come up right here. So I'm like around the middle of the arm. So I'm gonna go back in and bring my needle up to that point. So right about there. And I'm gonna see where 
this lands on the arm when I put it down. So here's my stitch and right there. And I'm gonna go through the entire arm like that. All right, when I pull that tight, it brings the arm down and it'll keep it from sticking out too much. All right, so I'm gonna go back in one stitch down and then I'm gonna come up right here toward the edge so I can tie my knot where it won't be visible I came up a little um, far away from where I wanted so I'm gonna just come right back one stitch where I want my to tie it off and again use the pliers whenever you have a hard time pulling the needle through just save your hands all that strain. All right, so now I'm right here. I'm just gonna tie a knot around that stitch and then weave in the end. And it doesn't matter where you come out because you're gonna go right back in to the same spot when you're doing this. And I'm going to just trim that. Okay, and both my arms are attached. Alright, we're on the very last step, and that is attaching the heart to the bunny. You're going to thread a very long piece of yarn that is the same color as the body. Then we're going to pin the heart in place. You want the toes of the bunny to show, so make sure you know, you're know you not in front of the feet, but tucked behind the feet. And just put a pin right at the bottom point of the heart. Okay, so the hands are gonna be on the sides and the toes are gonna be in front of the heart. The first point we're gonna sew down is the bottom of the heart. So, um, I have a video um, linked in the description that um, goes into a lot more quick, uh, I'm sorry, goes into a lot more detail on how to sew this on. Um, if you've never sewn an item on when the doll is closed and what you're going to do is you can start anywhere. So somewhere far away from where you're going to be doing your stitches because at the end, once we sew this heart on, we're going to come back. To where we started tie a knot and it's going to be hidden and i'll show you that so we'll start here and then our goal is going to be to come up where this pin is all right so you can see i came through here and i've got my needle lined up to the bottom of the heart and i'm going to pull our long thread through um our, our yarn through and leave a decent little chunk of a tail at the end all right, so we're going to remove the pin and we're going to go through the point of the heart, but we don't want to come through the front. We don't want people to see this color on the heart. So what we're going to do is look at the back. This is the point of the heart. We're going to go through just this back one little layer of that stitch. See, so no one's going to see that we went through there. All right, so pull that through. All right, so that's attached. Then our goal is going to be to get to where the arms are attached and we're gonna sew through inside the arm and do the same thing right here and right here. Okay, so let's go back into the body and come up somewhere over here. And making sure we don't pull this all the way through. Okay, so attached here and now we're here. Then we're gonna take our needle, go inside the arm and we're gonna come out 
right at the tip of the hands. Okay, so see the hand, and that's where my needle is. Pull that through. And then we're gonna look at the heart and find the stitch that lines up with the hand. Okay, so this stitch right here, you can mark it with a pin if you want. And then we're gonna go to the back. And now I know that I wanna go through the back of that stitch right here. So I'm just gonna go through one layer so that you can't see it from the front. And pull that all the way through. So now the hand is attached to the heart. We're going to go back into the hand and come all the way through and come out where we brought it in at the base of the arm. Okay, so two points are attached. Then we're going to travel, we're right here right now, we're going to bring it to the other arm. So this is where it helps to have um, a very long needle, which I don't. <laughs> so if not, it's fine. You can make it work. It's just going to take a little more effort to push it through. So we're going to go back in the body and come across right there and pull that through. And repeat the same thing um, for this arm. All right, so we came up right here and now our goal is going to be to tie a knot. So we're going to bring our, we want to bring our needle here. So just go right back in where you were and come up through the same opening, the same stitch as where we started. And cut any extra. I cut it so that they're both the same length. Then we're gonna tie a knot. I do um, two or three. I'm gonna do three on this one. And get your needle again. You're gonna thread both ends onto the needle. Okay, like that. And then you're going back into the same exact spot that you made the knot. If not, it won't um, disappear and go inside the body. So come up anywhere that's kind of away from that. And when you pull that through, so there's a knot and watch, it'll just pop inside the body. And now there's no knot to be seen at all. All right, and then you can just weave in the rest of that tail end. And now the bunny is completely done. And you can put a note in there. You could put candy in there, whatever you want. And it can even stand by itself on a table. So it could be like a little desk buddy. All right, so if you have any questions, um, please leave a comment um, and, and I can get back to you as soon as I can. But I hope this uh, was fun for you to make. And if you post any pictures on social media, feel free to tag me. I like to share um, whenever you guys use my patterns and make stuff. Oh, thank you.
just not why you were here. 